Здравствуйте! Hello and welcome to Russian language class. Before moving on, let's have a quick recap of the topics that we have learnt in the previous lesson. If you remember, we have learnt about the declension of nouns and personal pronouns in the genitive case. And we only did the declension of singular nouns in the previous lesson. So, let's revise them again. У вас будет время? У вас будет время? Will you have time? If you answer this question in affirmative, да, у меня будет время. Yes, I will have time. So, this was when we use the nominative case. But what if we answer this question in negative? So, in negative sentence, we have to use the genitive case form of the noun. So, vremya will change to vremini. Niet umina ni bujet vremini. Niet umina ni bujet vremini. No, I will not have time. So, vremya, which is a neuter gender noun, changes to vremini. У кого есть красная сумка? У кого есть красная сумка? Who has got a red bag? У Нины. Нина has got a red bag. So, Нина has become Нины. So, А has been replaced with И. So, this was about the declension of singular nouns in the genitive case. So, if a masculine noun ends with a hard consonant, then we use a. So, we add a at the end to get its genitive case form. If the masculine noun ends with a soft consonant, then we replace the soft sign with ya. If a feminine noun ends with a, then we replace a with either e or e depending on what is the last consonant at the end of the stem. So, if the stem ends with one of those seven consonants, then we use e and other than these seven consonants we use e. If the feminine noun ends with a soft vowel which is ya, then ya is replaced with e and if the noun ends with a soft consonant or a soft sign, then soft sign is replaced with e. About the neuter gender nouns, when the neuter gender noun ends with O, which is a hard vowel, then O is replaced with A. And if the neuter gender noun ends with Ye, which is a soft vowel, then Ye is replaced with Ya. So, this was about the declension of singular nouns in the genitive case. We also discussed some words and some expressions about health. For example, how will you answer this question? Как вы себя чувствуете? How do you feel? Or how are you feeling? Как вы себя чувствуете? Я себя чувствую хорошо. I am feeling good. Or нормально. I am feeling okay. Or отлично. I am feeling excellent. Or плохо. I am feeling bad. Or you can say I am feeling better, which is лучше. Я себя чувствую лучше. So, this was about the topics that we had learnt in the previous lesson. Now, we will start the lesson with the new topics. The first topic for today's lesson is the declension of possessive pronouns in the genitive case. How possessive pronouns decline in the genitive case? For this purpose, I have written a few questions and answers where we have used the possessive pronouns in the genitive case. So, let us start with the first question. Che eta slavar? Che eta slavar? Che eta slavar? Slavar is masculine that is why we have used che. Che is whose? Whose is this dictionary? Eta slavar mai vo druga. Eta slavar mai vo druga. This is my friend's dictionary. So, here you can see mui has changed to mai wo. So, the nominative case form of mui changes to mai wo in the genitive case. So, masculine form mui changes to mai wo. Et slavar 
maivo turuga this is my friend's dictionary next question chia eta kniga chia eta kniga who's this book who's is this book eta kniga my sister eta kniga my sister so sister is feminine that is why we have used my a my a has come from maya so nominative maya changes to my a in the genitive case eta kniga my sister next question chia eta machina chia eta machina whose is this ka eta machina nashiva prapadavatelya eta machina nashiva prapadavatelya this is our teacher's car so here as you can see nash has become nashiva nash becomes nashiva in the genitive case next question chio pismo vichitaite chio pismo vichitaite whose letter are you reading so here how will you answer ye chitayu pismo vashiva sasyeda vashiva sasyeda sasyeda's neighbor i am reading your neighbor's letter i am reading your neighbor's letter so here vash has become vashiva moi has become maivo in masculine maye in feminine similarly nash has become nashiva with masculine and vash has become vashiva in masculine the next question chi eta photography chi eta photography whose are this photographs eta photography nashi prapada vachalnitsi eta photography nashi prapada vachalnitsi these are our teachers photographs so as you can see here nasha has become nashi so these are the forms of possessive pronouns in the genitive case so let's revise them once again moi becomes mai wo tvoi tvoi wo nash nashiva vash vashiva so we are talking about masculine forms what about feminine maya becomes maye tvaya tvaye nasha nashe vasha vashi ivo io and ich they don't change their forms in the genitive case so this was about the declension of possessive pronouns in the genitive case i hope you must have understood the declension so now we'll move on to the next topic we will now look at the declension of demonstrative and determinative pronouns in the genitive case so what happens when demonstrative and determinative pronouns are used in the genitive case so again we'll look at the changes through their use in the sentences for example i have written some questions here gps ni vannara avyatsa gps ni vannara avyatsa whose songs do you like so here as you can see nra vyatsa denotes the noun in plural that is why psni chi psni va nra vyatsa how will you answer this question mani nra vyatsa psni etava ili tavo kompositara see etava comes from the demonstrative pronoun etat and tavo comes from the demonstrative pronoun that or tot so etat is this and tot is that so i like the songs of this or that composer compositor is composer the one who composes music mane nravetsa pesni etava elitavo compositor so as you can see compositor is a masculine noun that is why etat has become etava and tot has become tavo 
नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन चे रमान वम नरावित्सा चे रमान वम नरावित्सा हियर रमान इज सिंगुलर दैट इज वाई नरावित्सा हैज बीन यू नरावित्सा रिप्रेजेंट्स द सिंगुलर नाउन्स और सिंगुलर सब्जेक्ट चे रमान वम नरावित्सा मुनियन नरावित्सा रमान ऐतई ईली तोई पिसाचल नित्सी मुनियन नरावित्सा रमान ऐतई तोई पिसाचल नित्सी ऐतई कम्स फ्रॉम द रेमेंस्ट्रेटिव प्रोनाउन ऐता एंड तोई कम्स फ्रॉम द रेमेंस्ट्रेटिव प्रोनाउन ता व्हिच आर फेमिनिन फॉर्म्स ऑफ द रेमेंस्ट्रेटिव प्रोनाउन्स ऐतत एंड तोत आई लाइक द नॉवेल ऑफ दिस और दैट फीमेल ऑथर पिसाचल इज अ मेल ऑथर एंड पिसाचल नित्सा अ फीमेल ऑथर so this is how we change or decline the demonstrative and determinative pronouns in the genitive case i have drawn a table here these are the masculine forms in the nominative case atat tot and ves ves is a determinative pronoun which means whole atat becomes atava tot tavo and ves sivo so these are the masculine forms in the genitive case if they are used with the masculine nouns the second row represents the feminine gender forms eta ta sia so what happens when they are used in the genitive case with the feminine nouns etai toi and siai so etai corresponds to eta toi ta and sia sia the next row is the neuter gender eta to sio so when they are used with neuter gender nouns eta becomes etava to becomes tavo and sio sivo so these are the forms of demonstrative and determinative pronouns in the genitive case i hope you must have understood the declension of the demonstrative and determinative pronouns in the genitive case so we will now look at some other topics and one more thing you have to remember that we are now talking about only singular number of demonstrative pronouns and determinative pronouns next topic we have is a very interesting topic you must have heard about russian names they sound different so let's first look at some of the russian names and how they are pronounced and then we'll discuss about them ivan ivanovich ivanov ivan ivanovich ivanov alexandr alexandrovich andreev alexandr Alexandrovich Andreev Pavel Alexandrovich Kapitanov Pavel Alexandrovich Kapitanov Maria Petrovna Ivanova Maria Petrovna Ivanova Tatiana Viktorovna Kalinova Tatiana Viktorovna Kalinova Tatiana Viktorovna Klinova Ludmila Dmitrievna Kalinina Ludmila Dmitrievna Kalinina So as you can see each Russian name is consists of three components the first one is here Ivan Alexander Pavel Maria Tatiana Ludmila the second component is somewhere in middle ivanovich alexandrovich alexandrovich petrovna viktorovna dmitrievna and the last one which is the third one ivanov andreev kapitanov ivanova klinova kalinina so 
A typical Russian name consists of three parts. The first one is Emya, Emya or the first name or the given name. And the second one is called Ochistva. Ochistva is patronymic, patronymic that is derived from your father's name. And Familia, Familia is the surname. So, the first one is the given name or the first name the second one is derived from your father's name and the third component is your surname. So, as you can see each Russian name consists of three parts. So, now we will discuss about each of those parts separately. We have already seen that there are three components in a Russian name, Emya which is a given name O Chistva, which is a patronymic and familia which is the surname. So, we will now look at each one of them separately. Emya which is a given name or the first name are mostly Christian names in Russian, but apart from the Christian names or biblical characters there are certain Slavic names also which are present only in the Slavic languages. For example, the names, the first names such as Vera, Lubov, Vladimir, these first names are found only in the Russian names. Ochistva, Ochistva as we have already discussed is derived from the father's name. For example, if father's name is Ivan, then the son will take Ivanovich as his Ochistva or the patronymic and his daughter will take Ivanovna as patronymic. So, Ivan has two forms as patronymic Ivanovich for masculine and Ivanovna for feminine. As you can also observe that Ivan by adding some suffixes we get the patronymic from a first name. For example, Ivan Ivanovich. So, here you can see that Ovich we have added to Ivan to get the patronymic and Ovna to get the patronymic for feminine gender. So, we can now conclude that by adding suffixes, specific suffixes to the first name we derive Ochistva. So, now the question comes I have written here three suffixes here and four here. These three suffixes are used to derive the masculine patronymic whereas, these four suffixes are added to get the feminine patronymic. So, now we will see where do we add Ovich, where do we add Yevich and where do we add each to get the masculine patronymic and where do we add ovna, yevna, inichna or ichna to get the feminine patronymic. We have already discussed that patronymic are formed by adding specific suffixes to the first name and that is how we derive the patronymic. So, while discussing about the suffixes I have told you that we add Ovich, Ovna, Yevich, Yevna to get the patronymic. Ovich is added to the first name to get the masculine patronymic and Ovna to get the feminine patronymic. So, let us look at the example. Ivan if we add Ovich it becomes Ivanovich, Ivanovich is a masculine patronymic and if we add the suffix ovna it becomes ivanovna which is used as a feminine patronymic. This ovit and ovna they are added to the first name if it ends with a hard consonant. So, ovit and ovna can be used after the first name which ends with a hard consonant to get the patronymic. The next set of suffixes are Yevich and Yevna. 
for example nikolai nikolai if we add the suffix ye with we get nikolai with and if we add the suffix yevna we get nikolaevna as you can see nikolai ends with e kratke so if a first name ends with e kratke then we add the suffixes ye which and yevna to get the patronymic and one more thing to remember here is that while making the patronymic you have to drop the ending which is e kratke so now it must be clear to you that if a first name ends with a hard consonant then we use ovich and ovna suffixes and if the first name ends with e kratke then we add yevich and yevna so now we'll look at some other suffixes next set of suffixes used to form patronymic are eat in each na each to make the masculine patronymic and in each na to make the feminine patronymic for example elia elia plus each and becomes elite it's a masculine patronymic elia plus in each na in each na that's a feminine patronymic as you can already see that elia ends with ya so whenever a first name ends with ya then we use these suffixes to form their patronymic so elia elich elia elinichna the next set of suffixes are each and eachna so where do we use these suffixes if a first name ends with a for example nikita nikita ends with a so in this case we'll use this set of suffixes nikita plus each nikitit nikitit is a masculine patronym patronymic and nikita plus each na nikitichna nikitichna is the feminine patronymic so these were the suffixes that are used to form the patronymic from the first name so now the third component which is familia familia is surname so how do we form surnames from the first name so like the patronymic these are also derived from the first name by adding various suffixes some of the suffixes which are added to get the surname are of yef yof in ich ich so these are few suffixes which are used to get the masculine surname and ova yeva yova ina ich and ich these are the suffixes which are added to a first name to get the feminine surname so this was about the components of russian names so let me tell you one thing that first name is used to address familiar persons and first name along with the patronymic is used to address someone in a formal context to show politeness and respect in addition to these names there are some nicknames too in russian so we will now look at some of the nicknames in russian like any other languages there are some nicknames also which are used and which are the diminutive forms from the first name so there are first names and nicknames are derived from the first names i have written here the diminutive forms or the nicknames first and then their corresponding first name vanya vanya corresponds to the first name ivan masha masha maria 
Vova or Volodya. These are the nicknames for Vladimir. So, if the first name is Vladimir, you can address that person in informal context as Vova or Volodya. Lyuda, Lyuda corresponds to the first name. Ludmila, Ludmila is a feminine name. Sasha, Sasha corresponds to the masculine name Alexander or Alexander, that is how we call it in English. Katya, Katya corresponds to the first name Ekaterina and Katya is a feminine name. So, Vanya Ivan, Masha Maria, Vova Valodia Vladimir, Luda Ludmila, Sasha Alexandre, Katya Ekaterina, Dima Dmitri. So, Dima corresponds to the first name Dmitri, Misha Mikhail. Misha Mikhail, Natasha Natalia, Natasha Natalia, Tanya Tatiana. So, if the first name is Tatiana, then the nickname would be Tanya. Kolya corresponds to the first name Nikolai. So, these are few of the nicknames that are used in Russian language to address someone in informal context or the familiar situations. So, this is all we have for today's lesson. So, what all we have learned today? We have learned the possessive pronouns, demonstrative pronouns and determinative pronouns in the genitive case. How do they decline in the genitive case? And apart from that, we discussed about Russian names, their components and the nicknames derived from the first names. So, that is all for today. We will meet in the next class. Till then. Спасибо, до свидания.